Hello everyone, very excited to greet you again from Cape Town, South Africa for another discussion. And tonight we are going to be speaking about episode 5 of my podcast. If you have not listened to it yet, I will give you a, a quick summary. It was a fantastic episode. It fired me up myself while I was recording it. But let us pray together to the Lord and then we will jump into the Word of God. I have some fantastic points to share with you tonight. Points that I really believe will be a great encouragement to you and will equip you to do even mightier exploits for our Savior King. Because after all, we do not get together to have nice goose bumpy feelings, but we come together to learn more about God so that we can better serve Him. We come together for a purpose. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, precious Jesus, wondrous Holy Spirit, we love you, we worship you, and we adore you. Thank you for the privilege that we have to come together to read your word, to learn from your word, to learn more about you. Give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may be enlightened, Father God, that we may know you more and that we may be more useful vessels for your glory. Thank you for blessing this time together. Let us feel your presence. Let us experience your power. Amen and amen. Well, the last episode of my podcast, episode 5, I preached from John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. These are two key verses. There are two pivotal verses. I always share these two verses when we have our crusade services. Those of you who are familiar with our crusade services will know that yes, we preach the gospel, we get people saved, that is our primary focus, but we have a secondary focus as well. On three of the evenings, I preach two messages, or we preach two messages. Samuel, our wonderful crusade director, often shares his testimony, and he does an extraordinary job at sharing his testimony and preaching a red-hot gospel message. So on three of the nights of our crusade, we bring two messages, a gospel message, we get people saved, and then a message on the Holy Spirit. We want to equip the people in the gathering to be used by God mightily. Obviously, the crusade is going to come to an end and our team is going to move on to the next place to have a crusade, but the people remain, the pastors remain, and we want them to have a full understanding of who the Holy Spirit is. We want them to have a full understanding of what it means to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and we want them to understand how to partner with the Spirit of God so that they can be used by the Holy Spirit to win the lost, set the captives free, and heal the sick. So I always share on one of the evenings from John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27, there in Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit as the great witness sent from heaven, the one who is going to testify that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus delivers. But then he turns to his disciples and he says, you guys are not going to be left out. You also are going to testify. You also are going to bear witness of who I am. Jesus here is introducing a witnessing team, a partnership that consists of the Holy Spirit and the believer. And we move forward in this partnership being used by God, the Spirit of God flowing through us to witness with signs and wonders following. So please listen to episode five if you have not yet. I am going to carry on in this vein speaking about this partnership in our little chit chat tonight. And I want us to hop over to John, John chapter three. This is a fantastic chapter. I love I love preaching on this chapter. Whenever I get a chance to preach a gospel message, I often, I often draw from this 
chapter. It is the story of Jesus and his encounter with Nicodemus, that dear Pharisee. And I look forward to shaking Nicodemus' hand in heaven one day. I am convinced that he made it in. And I look forward to having a conversation with Nicodemus and how it felt to have that discussion with Jesus, that discussion that ushered forth that famous verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. What a privilege to have been part of that discussion and to hear those words out of the mouth of the Lamb of God. So here, right at the beginning of John chapter 3, in verse 2, let's read that verse together. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. I want us to focus on that little bit there at the end. God is with him. Nicodemus did not understand much, but he understood one thing, that God was with Jesus, that God Almighty was moving with Jesus, that God was moving through Jesus. Nicodemus understood this partnership concept that Jesus was a partner with the Spirit of the Most High God and together, together, they were preaching the gospel together. They were healing the sick together. They were casting out demons. It was a partnership. Nicodemus says there, no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him and God is clearly with you. Nicodemus understood that Jesus would not have been able to do any mighty works unless God was with him. Jesus himself he declared quite boldly, he said, I can do nothing of myself but what I see the Father do. For whatever the Father does, I do myself in like manner. Friend, this partnership with God, this partnership with the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ laid the foundation and we must follow his example as the Holy Spirit partnered with Jesus while Jesus was in this world, so the Holy Spirit wants to partner with us. We find that, that expression, God, God is with Jesus. God was with him. We find that same expression in Acts. Acts chapter 10. I want to hop over there and read a verse here. Peter was preaching to Cornelius and his household. And we read here what he says about Jesus. And he says in verse 38 of Acts 10, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. I wonder if Peter overheard that conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus and that statement by Nicodemus got stuck in his head and he repeated it there when he was speaking to Cornelius and his household. Clearly God was with Jesus. Clearly God and Jesus labored together. They were a team this partnership existed between God and his Christ. And the same partnership exists between the believer and the spirit of the most high God. What an extraordinary privilege that just as the spirit of the most high partnered with Jesus, so he desires to partner with us. This is, this is a splendid truth. I cannot I cannot get enough of it. It is a revelation. If we let that revelation sink into us, we will never be the same again. That God is laboring with us. That every moment of witness, every moment in which we step out and we, we let God flow through us, every moment is driven by God, fueled by God, empowered by God. 
we are never alone as we as we seek out opportunities to to bear witness to his name god is with us all of the time working with us this truth always fills me with such confidence when i i preach the gospel on stage you know especially at our gospel crusades you know sometimes or very often where we are staying you know the accommodation is not the best often there's no running water you know the electricity is more not there than there you know the the bed and my husband always complains about the bed is very very hard so often the the night's sleep is not the best and then one gets on stage in front of tens of thousands of people a different culture a different language a, a town a village community in the middle of nowhere and now you need to preach all of heaven down and just the knowledge that God is with me, that I am not there alone, that I am saturated with the Spirit, and that God is preaching with me, that God is praying for the sick with me, that I am not alone. You know, that knowledge gives one the gumption to keep on going. You know, this, this concept of God and the believer laboring together, we find this concept throughout scripture. I'll, I'll read another verse to you from the book of Hebrews. From the book of Hebrews, let's read from Hebrews together from the second chapter. And I will read here to you verse three and verse four. Here we read, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him, God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Here we have the author of Hebrews making it very clear that here, yes, they heard the gospel through those who heard Christ, who were witnesses of Christ, you know, the, the apostles, you know, Peter and James and John, but God also bore witness. God also bore witness through them. Here we find that, that partnership being declared here, this partnership between the believer, between the Christ follower and God himself. Here the Christ follower preaches the gospel, shares the truth, and here God backs up the Christ follower with signs and wonders. What, what a splendid truth. One last little verse I want to read you from Acts 2. And then I am going to dive into a, a story from the Gospels that I know is going to bless you greatly. But if we hop over to Acts chapter 2, here in this in the sermon that, that Peter preaches on the day of Pentecost. Um, he makes it very clear again that God and Jesus labored together. Acts chapter 2 verse 22, and Peter says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst as you yourselves also know God did these signs and wonders through Jesus, through Jesus. There we find the partnership. Jesus cooperated. Jesus was available. Jesus was willing. Jesus was obedient. And God, God worked wonders through him. The Spirit of God worked wonders through him. I was asked once by a pastor, um, you know, whether I was good at healing. I'll never forget the question. It sounded like such a stra strange question. He said, you know, evangelist, are you good at healing? I, I said, I am very bad at healing. I said, I am terrible. In fact, I could not heal a fly even if I tried, even if I gave my very best effort. I said, but the Holy Spirit within me is the greatest healer of them all. And he has never let anybody down. 
friend, the spirit of God within us. He is the healer. He is the miracle worker. He is the deliverer. And if we would just work with him, if we would just give him a gap, then he will flow through us just like he flowed through Jesus and work signs and wonders, signs of salvation, of healing and of deliverance. Now, having said that, I want us to hop to John chapter 6. And I want to read here a little story, the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And I want to share something with you that the Lord just recently put on my heart, but it was a great encouragement to me, and I believe it will be an encouragement to you. John chapter 6, and I will read from verse 1. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have even a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Now, this is a glorious story. Um, I think every, uh, every, every church-run soup kitchen wishes that we would have frequent repeats of the story. Um, you know, the Lord was really playing with physics here. And here we find... A statement, an interesting statement here in verse 6. But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. You know, Jesus already knew that he was going to feed this great multitude. He already had a plan in mind. But he wanted his disciples to be a part of that plan. He wanted to partner with them. You know, this is, this is so extraordinary of Jesus. You know, he... He could have done everything by himself quite easily, but he worked with humanity. He partnered with people. And here he turns to Philip and he gives Philip the first opportunity. Do you want to partner with me? Do you want to take the plunge? Do you want to believe me for the impossible? Do you want to work with me to work this, this mighty miracle? of feeding this great multitude when we definitely do not have any food at our disposal, let alone this much food. And here Philip, God bless Philip, he does what many of us do. Actually, all of us have done at least at one point in our lives. And if you have only done this once in your life, then I am impressed. You are a saint of saints. Philip makes a statement basically saying that the situation is impossible. 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. You know, Philip declares the impossibility of this situation. You know, he focuses on what is before him. He focuses on the natural. He he forgets that the one asking him the question is the son of the Most High, the one through whom the heavens and the earth were formed, the one who heals every manner of disease. 
you know, the, the, the one who can even forgive sins. God the Son, the Son of God, Philip forgets and he professes the impossibility of the situation. And you know what, what touches me here is I think, I think how many situations I've been in when God has prompted me, you know, to, to take a risk, to step out, you know, to, to speak to someone about Jesus, to, to pray for someone whose situation seems impossible, to take on a challenge that seems insurmountable. And I think how many times I didn't pick up the baton, I backed down and I, I, I declared the situation to be impossible and I ducked, you know, I retreated. And I think of how many, how many opportunities were lost, not for God to do something because God would just have moved on and used somebody else, but how many opportunities that were lost for me to be used by God. Because we see here, you know, the Lord does not accept Philip's statement and go, oh, well, well then, you know, Philip, clearly, since you're not willing to work with me, then that's the end of the line. That's the end of the story. The crowd will just have to go hungry. You know, here he waits. He gives the disciples a, a moment, the other disciples a moment. And here Andrew pipes up. Um, and, you know, I, I love Andrew. I find Andrew very enjoyable. And I don't know if any of you watching have been keeping up with the Chosen series, I still need to catch up a little bit, but it's such a fantastic series. And, you know, the episodes that I've watched, Andrew is always portrayed as the eager beaver, you know, the helper. He's always scurrying around Jesus like a little puppy. He just wants to be useful. Um, and I think this is quite a beautiful portrayal of Andrew because here Andrew, Andrew pipes up, you know, he has an idea. He wants to be useful. You know, and he says, there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? You know, I, I love this. You know, here Andrew, you know, part of him wants to take a risk. He wants to put himself out there. He wants to suggest something. You know, he's seen Jesus do mighty miracles. He's seen Jesus work, work impossible feats. He's seen Jesus make the impossible possible. Um, so he puts himself out there, he takes the risk, he makes a suggestion, but as he makes a suggestion, as the words come out of his mouth, you know, he wants to retract them, he wants to retreat. And I'm pretty sure that as he said, there is a lad here who had five barley loaves, or who has five barley loaves and two small fish. I'm pretty sure his brother Peter, you know, started sniggering there at his side. You know, what are you doing, Andrew? What a ridiculous suggestion. You know, why do you bring this to the master? You know, so... Andrew tries to retract, you know, but what are they among so many? I know, I know it's a stupid idea, you know, but just that little, that little risk that Andrew took, you know, putting himself out there, putting himself forward. That's all that Jesus needed. That's all that he needed. Just that, that one toe, you know, over the line saying, okay, Lord, I'm in. I don't know how you're going to do this, but I'm in. I'm here to work with you. I'm here to cooperate. Tell me what you want to do. Tell me what you want me to do. Here Jesus says, make the people sit down. And he takes the five barley loaves and the two small fish and he, he multiplies it and he works, he works the extraordinary. And, you know, this, this for me is so encouraging. It's a warning and it is encouraging at the same time. It, it warns us, it warns us to remember who God is. He is the one who he is the one who causes manna to rain down from heaven. You know, he is the one who causes fire to descend from heaven and and consume a, an altar sodden with water. You know, he is he is the one who, you know, can make human feet walk on water. You know, he is the one who can raise the dead, who can cleanse a leper. You know, he is the one who truly can take an impossible situation and work it all out beautifully. You know, he turned this impossible situation into a joyous family picnic, you know, just like that. Um, you know, we must remember who we are working with. We must remember who we are partnering with, God, the spirit of the most high God. So we must we must keep our declarations of impossibility to ourselves and we must, we must put ourselves out there and be prepared to work with him and take a risk 
if necessary. To take a risk to seem foolish, to take a risk maybe to be criticized, to risk failure, risk falling on our faces. We must be prepared to take a risk. And we will find that as we take that risk, as we step out, God is there waiting for us to take that step. He is there ready to work with us. He is there ready to move through us. He is there ready to use us as his vessels to make the impossible possible. So we must be an Andrew and not a Philip. But I like the story because Philip wasn't left out. You know, Philip got to distribute the food together with Andrew and the other disciples. So, you know, even if we have been the one declaring something to be impossible rather than stepping out and taking a risk and cooperating with the Lord, the Lord will not leave us out and he will still use us. But I think Philip learned a lesson here and maybe next time, you know, rather than declaring the situation to be impossible, you know, he took the risk um, and he stepped out and he said, Lord, I'm in, you know, whatever you want to do, just tell me I'm here. I'll do it. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm available. So friend, I, I hope you are encouraged. I know that, that I am encouraged and, you know, Andrew, this, this risk that he took, you know, it was, it, it, it was such a, such a messy suggestion that he made, you know, half a suggestion and half a retraction of that suggestion, but it's all God needed to work. So even if you step out and you take that risk and the risk is a little bit messy, you know, step out, take the chance. God is there waiting to work with you. He is there waiting to partner with you. And I know if you step out, he will not let you fall on your face. He will, he will give you wings to fly and you will look back and you will say, God, you are extraordinary and I am your partner and what a privilege it is. And with you, the impossible becomes possible and mighty miracles are worked. So that concludes our little chit chat for this evening. I, I hope that you are blessed. I am blessed diving into the word of God together with you. Be sure to catch episode six of my podcast. It will be uploaded to the various platforms tomorrow. And you can find my podcast on Spotify, Apple iTunes, on Google, Amazon Music, Charisma Podcast Network, on YouTube as well. You will find on the Inner Same Ministries YouTube channel. It is In His Name Min is our username on YouTube. Um, or just search for my name. Um, the Lord blessed me with a unique first name and a unique surname. So you can find me quite easily. And on our Inner Same Ministries YouTube channel, there is a playlist called Podcasts, and you can catch up there as well with all the podcasts. So be sure to listen to episode six. I know you will be blessed. I know you will be encouraged. I know you will be empowered. And I look forward to being with you again next week, Tuesday, same time, same place, Facebook Live. If you have not yet got a copy of my book, Spirit of Fire, I encourage you to bounce onto innersname.shop. And by your copy, you will also find a lot of e-booklets that you can download for free. Well, on the shop, they are all $1 each, but there is a little promo code that you can enter. And then it will knock the $1 price down to zero. Um, so you can avail yourself of those e-booklets for free. Or if you want to give the $1, no, it will go towards our gospel crusade. So until next week, I love you. I am praying for you. Go for it. Keep on taking those risks and winning your world for Jesus.